The mouth of the just man utters wisdom, and his tongue tells forth what is just. The law of his God is in his heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. For us to celebrate the sacred mysteries worthily, we acknowledge our sins, be sorry for them, and then we ask for the mercy of God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who constantly raised up in your church new examples of virtue, grant that we may follow so closely in the footsteps of the Bishop St. Alphonsus in his zeal for souls, as to attain the same rewards that are his in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fifth month of the fourth year, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azur, from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years, I will restore to this place all the vessels of the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place to Babylon. And I will bring back to this place Jeconiah, son of Joachim, king of Judah, and all the exiles of Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. The prophet Jeremiah answered the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people assembled in the house of the Lord and said, Amen. Thus may the Lord do. May he fulfill the things you have prophesied by bringing the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles back to Babylon to this place. But now, listen to what I am about to state in your hearing and the hearing of all the people. From of old, the prophets were before you and me prophesied war, woe, and pestilence against many lands and mighty kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace is recognized as truly sent by the Lord only when his prophetic prediction is fulfilled. Thereupon, the prophet Hananiah took the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it and said in the presence of all the people, Thus says the Lord, Even so, within two years, I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from off the neck of all the nations. At that, the prophet Jeremiah went away. Sometime after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go tell Hananiah this. Thus says the Lord, 
by breaking a, wood, a wooden yoke, you forge an iron yoke. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, a yoke of iron I will place on the necks of all these nations serving Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him, even the beasts of the field I give him. To the prophet Hananiah, the prophet Jeremiah said, Hear this, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you. You have raised false confidence in his people. For this, says the Lord, I will dispatch you from the face of the earth. This very year you shall die, because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. That same year, in the seventh month, Hananiah the prophet died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, teach me your statutes. Lord, teach me your statutes. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. Lord, teach me your statutes. Take not the word of truth from my mouth, for in your ordinances is my hope. Lord, teach me your statutes. Let those turn to me who fear you and acknowledge your decrees. Lord, teach me your statutes. Let my heart be perfect in your statutes, that I be not put to shame. Lord, teach me your statutes. Sinners wait to destroy me, but I pay heed to your decrees. Lord, teach me your statutes. From your ordinances I turn not away, for you have instructed me. Lord, teach me your statutes. Alleluia, alleluia. Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. He said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said a blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Tessa Beleki, she was a Carmelite nun and a mother abbess for 40 years. She's now a Christian hermit. And uh, <clears throat> she has written extensively about the life and spirituality of St. Teresa of Avila. And she wrote that Teresa of Avila has a lot to teach us about suffering. 
Tessa Beleke said that for almost 40 years, for almost 40 years, the rest of Avila spent not a day without physical suffering. For 40 years, almost 40 years, every day, Teresa of Avila, she had her own share of physical suffering. That it almost took her life in 1850. Adlaw-adlaw ga masakit ka, may ginabat siya ka, hindi lang lahog-lahog nga sakit ulo. It almost took her life in 1580 that left her palsied for the last two years of her life. Every day. But Teresa of Avila wrote that physical sickness, or we call it, we call it any kind of suffering, is not an obstacle to spiritual growth. Actually, it enhances, it makes us grow spiritually through this physical suffering. Why? According to St. Teresa of Avila, because we learn patience and surrender through sufferings. Patience and surrender. In other words, we learn to transcend our body and rise beyond sickness and health that we learn to trust in God. So we grow spiritually through sufferings in life. They are not obstacles. And Teresa of Avila wrote to the community in Seville where she founded. And so beautiful. This is, this is, I think, the message also of the gospel for us. And the first reading, Teresa said, as she wrote, Courage, courage, daughters, remember, God gives no one burden that no one is able to carry. God gives no one a burden that no one, that one is not able to carry. God is always with those in tribulation. Something so comforting and consoling. In today's gospel reading, Jesus also, he had his own share of suffering, the death of his second cousin, John. They were so close to one another. And the passing away of John really had a great impact in his life. That he went on his own in a deserted place to grieve, to mourn. But remember, as St. Teresa of Avila said, God gives no one a burden that one cannot carry. And that, does, that one cannot carry, God accompanies or is with those who are in tribulation. So comforting. A Franciscan monk, Richard Rohr, he added to this about suffering. He said, sufferings can lead us either in two directions, either in two. When we suffer, either financial suffering, physical suffering, relational suffering, any kind of suffering, it can lead us either in two directions. One is that we become bitter. Why me? Why not others? We become bitter. And that when we become bitter, we start to close ourselves. We start to close ourselves. But the other direction, according to Father Richard Rohr, is that we become compassionate, not bitter. 
we become wise, we become compassionate because of the sufferings that we are going through in life. And when we become wise and compassionate, we start to open ourselves. We open ourselves for what reason? He said maybe because it softened our heart. It softened our heart. Or maybe we become open and we embrace other people who are so going through their own tribulations in life because the suffering pushed us to the edge of our inner resources. Ubus, ubus na git. Push us to the wall of our inner resources where we fall into the hands of the living God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 31. Suffering enhances spiritual growth for it can push us to the edge of our inner resources. Exhausted already that we now submit, we surrender, we fall into the hands of the living God. Whatever yoke you are carrying now, as in today's first reading, Jeremiah was carrying a wooden yoke, the symbol of the sufferings, of the destiny, the faith of the people of God in exile. It was broken by Hananiah, a false prophet. But God said, no, they will go through lots of suffering, even greater sufferings. So that wooden yoke was changed into an iron-made yoke. Whatever tribulations we are going through now, either a wooden-made yoke or iron-made yoke, my dear friends, remember this. So comforting. God is with those who are in tribulation. He will never give one a burden that one cannot carry and he will accompany the one who is in tribulation let us pray for this grace that as we go through our own personal tribulations in life we will take that second direction to be wise to be compassionate so that we can be like jesus in today's gospel reading he had his own share of sufferings in today's gospel reading the death the murder of his second cousin john the baptist but he took the second direction he took pity on those people a vast crowd who are hungry let's pray for this grace not to be bitter but rather to be more wise and compassionate. Jesus invited his disciples to deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow him. Let us pray for the courage to follow Jesus, for only the way of the cross leads to salvation. Lord, give us the courage to follow you. Lord, give us the courage to follow you. That the ministers of the church may feed without fail the people of God in the table of the word and in the table of the Lord's body we pray Lord, Lord give, us give us the, the courage, courage to, follow. to follow you that government and civil agencies may attend to the people's need for food shelter and security we pray Lord, give us the courage to follow you that we may be generous with our little resources which the Lord will multiply to answer the needs of many, we pray. Lord, give us the courage to follow you 
As we pray for those who are hungry, may the Lord touch our hearts and open our hands to feed them, we pray. Lord, give us the courage to follow you. May we thank the Lord for the gift of food that restores our strength, for those who work to produce what we eat, and for those who prepare it at the table, we pray. Lord, give us the courage to follow you. Father, may we never exchange our salvation for anything that the world offers. Give us the courage to follow Christ in his suffering so that we can share in the joy of his victory over sin and death. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through goodness we have this wine to offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And so pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to enkindle our hearts with the celestial fire of your spirit, just as you granted St. Alphonsus should celebrate these mysteries and by them offer himself to you as a holy sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Let Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For us on the festival of St. Alphonsus, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Patricia our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, the Blessed Apostles with Saint Sebastian, Saint Alphonsus, Saint Zeli and Louis Martin, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day, day our daily, daily bread. bread. Forgive and us our, our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins, the sins of, the of the world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins, the sins of the world. world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Amen. 
Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We proclaim Christ crucified, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. The body of Christ. Amen. For those who are joining our live stream celebration, let us now pray the spiritual communion prayer. O oh my Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament. I love you and I desire you to come into my heart. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, oh never leave me. May the burning and most sweet power of your love consume me, that I may die for you who died for love of me, amen. Let us pray. O God who gave St. Alphonsus to be the faithful steward and preacher of this great mystery, grant that your faithful may receive it often, and receiving it, praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for protection against COVID-19. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins, and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love, and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. 
Grant all these to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, help of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. Saint Sebastian. Pray for us. Saint Rock. Pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.